Welcome to Watershed Maps, an interactive remote learning experience presented by Valley Water. At Valley Water, we have a lot of important jobs, but most importantly, we provide safe, clean, reliable drinking water to all of the residents in Santa Clara County. That's over 2 million people, including you. Think of all the ways that you used water today. Have you brushed your teeth? Washed your hands? Maybe taken a shower? We need safe, clean water every day, and here in our county, it all starts with Valley Water. But that's not all we do. We're also in charge of flood protection and keeping our environment clean and healthy for everyone who calls Santa Clara County home. This lesson was developed by the Education Outreach Team at Valley Water. Together, we visit over 13,000 students each year in all 15 cities here in Santa Clara County. For today's activity, we'll be taking a closer look at watersheds. We'll be exploring the important role they play in our environment, and you'll get to see firsthand how watersheds are used to make critical decisions by making your own 3D maps. Let's get started. For this activity, you'll need the following materials. A piece of plain scrap paper, some water-based markers, a bowl of water, and a plate to put your map on. For the markers, we recommend blue, brown, green, red, and orange. But if you don't have these exact colors, that's okay too. First, let's define what exactly a watershed is. A watershed is an area of land that water flows across or through as it makes its journey to a body of water, like a creek, river, lake, bay, or ocean. The boundary of a watershed is the ridge line of high land that surrounds it, like the edge of a bowl. Since we all live in the watershed of a creek or stream, this means that your house, the roads, your school, and all of the buildings in our neighborhoods are in a watershed too. The watershed itself is made up of several different parts, as seen here in this diagram. To better understand the role they play, let's take a closer look at each part. Precipitation is any liquid or frozen water that forms in the atmosphere and falls back to the earth in the form of rain, hail, sleet, or snow. Headwaters are places where streams begin, usually at the highest point in a watershed, like at the top of a hill or mountain. Tributaries are small streams that flow into one another to make larger streams, and these larger streams join to form rivers. A floodplain is an area of land that can become flooded when a river or stream overflows. An estuary is the area where the river meets the ocean. Remember, the ocean is made up of salt water. However, our creeks and rivers are made up of fresh water. In this area, the two mix. Finally, we have the ridge line which is the top edge of the mountain that divides one watershed from another. It's what gives our watersheds their borders. In Santa Clara County, we have five main watersheds. The largest watershed in the county is the Coyote Watershed. Sixteen major creeks drain into this watershed, including Coyote Creek, which is the longest creek in the county. We also have the Guadalupe, Lower Peninsula, Uvas Yagas, and West Valley watersheds, all of which drain precipitation into their nearest body of water. Before we begin the activity, take a moment to gather your materials. Remember, you'll need a piece of plain scrap paper, some water-based markers, a bowl of water, and a plate to put your map on. Now, let's get started. The first step is to take your piece of paper and crumple it up. That's right, crumple it up into a ball, just like the picture. Now, unravel your paper, but make sure it's not completely flat. We want to make sure there are high points and low points on your map. The high points represent mountains, and the low areas in between are the valleys.
Use a brown marker to mark the highest points, which form the boundaries of your watersheds. Using the side of the marker makes this part a little bit easier. Remember, we just want to mark the tall points. Next, use the blue marker to mark where you predict the water will flow. Remember to mark any streams that could come down from the mountains, as well as any rivers or lakes that you think may form. Now, using our green marker, we're going to add some vegetation, or plants. Where do you think plants will grow? Close to the water, or far away? As you can see in the picture, all you need to do is put some green color in those areas. You don't need to fully color it in. Now we're going to make some choices for our community, starting with where you would want to live if you could live anywhere on your map. Using the red marker, add an X to mark the spot where your home will be. Then, add some dots to mark places where you think other people would like to live. Before we do the last step, we have a question for you. Do you know where the water from storm drains flows to? Our storm drains connect directly to the creeks. That means the water flows from our neighborhoods directly to our waterways. Now, use your orange marker to draw a rectangle beside each house. These represent the storm drains in each neighborhood. Now we have our completed watershed maps. You're probably thinking that your map looks quite different from the one in the picture, and you'd be right, but that's a good thing. Everyone's map is going to be a little different, just like each watershed is different. Before we move on to the final step, take one last look at your maps. Notice where you chose to put your houses and storm drains. See where you predicted that the water would flow during times of precipitation. Now you'll get the chance to see your watershed in action. Now, you're gonna sprinkle your maps with water to simulate rain. Dip your fingers in the bowl of water and let it fall into your maps, just like rain from clouds. Keep doing this until you start to see the water flow through your watershed map. You may need to do this seven or eight times. While this is happening, observe where the water is flowing and how your homes and storm drains are being affected. Now that you have seen what happens when it rains on your watershed map, you can make some observations. For example, now you can see the path taken by the water, as well as some of the things that it picked up along the way. Before we move on, take a moment to discuss the following questions as a class. Did anyone decide to build their home in an area that became flooded with water? What happened to the orange squares that represent storm drains? Did you see any of the orange color traveling into the waterways? What could this represent? And now that you have this information, what changes would you make to the placement of homes and storm drains on your map? So why do you think it's important to learn about watersheds? Before we talk about that, take a few seconds to remember what a watershed is. A watershed is the land around a body of water, like a river, lake, or ocean, that drains water into it when it rains, and it affects your local water supply. What happens in your local watershed can help you understand how human actions can impact the quality and quantity of our water. Valley Water staff work hard to protect our environment and ensure that we deliver safe, reliable drinking water today and into the future but we're not the only ones who can have a positive impact on our water supply. There are things that you can do every day to help. This is a photograph taken of one of our local creeks. 
Notice all the trash? How do you think it all got there? These are images of storm drain outlets. Maybe you've noticed these in your neighborhood. This is how the water from our storm drains travels to the creeks. This water is called runoff, and what you may not know is that it flows untreated directly to the creeks. That means that whatever is on the streets, like trash, oil, or other pollutants, can end up in our waterways too. What this shows us is that pollution on our streets can end up in our creeks. As you saw on your maps, pollution is a big problem for our waterways. Whether it's from garbage entering our storm drains, or simply an overstuffed garbage can in the park. Take some time to think of the things that you can do every day to reduce trash pollution in our environment. If we tell you that single-use plastics, which are the plastics that you use once and then throw away, are one of the biggest causes of trash, does that give you some more ideas of ways that you can help protect our watersheds? These are some of the easy things that you may have thought of. Saying no to straws, remembering your reusable water bottle every day, and packing a zero garbage lunch are just a few of the many ways we can reduce trash and keep our watersheds clean. There are even a number of ways to get directly involved, such as participating in our Adopt-A-Creek program or volunteering your time to help clean your local creek. Valley Water hosts a number of these sorts of events throughout the year, so be on the lookout for ways you can help us be part of the solution. Thank you for participating in Valley Water's Watershed Maps activity. We hope you had some fun, and most importantly, we hope you learned about the roles that watersheds play in our community, as well as ways that you can help ensure that our environment and water supply stay clean for generations to come. If you liked the activity, we'd like to hear from you. If you want to send us a drawing, email, or photo of your watershed map, you can email us at education at valleywater.org or mail us at Education Outreach Valley Water at 5750 Almaden Expressway, San Jose, California, 95118.